Hello, 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 everyone. This is Nick Zituni and Samantha Walton here again for our classic information. All right. So for today's video, Sam and I were thinking, well, what would be a next interesting topic that we could bring to you parents and a topic that, of course, is uh, of interest, right? Because we can start talking about whatever here that might not even be applied to your life. So today, we decided to talk about... Nutrition. There we go. So, first things first, and something that uh, I am very, at least, particular about this topic. Uh, yes, I did study a lot of uh, biochemistry back in my biology days. So, nutrition is not the main topic of my life, but at least I understand a little bit more and how food will behave in your body. And, of course, education. As early childhood educators, we do learn a little bit about how nutrition is important and can impact your children's life. So before we get into the, the minutiae of it, I just want to make sure that all parents need to understand that there is no perfect meal, no perfect routine of eating. It's very situational. And I know, I know, a lot of you might be thinking like, but people in social media, my nutritionist, yada, yada, it's like, Sometimes they had good intentions, sometimes they just want to sell you their products, right? But the whole idea here is you need to understand that your nutrition, your children's nutrition needs to be put in context. And that context is your financial situation. What are the items that you have available to purchase? What is your time even to prepare food to make sure that you have something for your children to eat? And I understand that as parents, right, Sam, we all try to try for what's best for our children, but you need to be aware that regardless of what nutritionist, TikTok person, or Instagram, you know, bodybuilder tells you what's right or wrong for you and your uh, family, be mindful of your current situation because if you keep going crazy that you're doing it wrong, you're going to be creating a terrible relationship with food and that's only going to create a, a bad situation, a bad case of mental health and food anxiety, for example. So now that the foundation has been laid, Sam, let's talk a little bit about nutrition for children. So nutrition usually falls into about five different categories. So we have dairy, greens, vegetables, fruit, and protein. Mm -hmm. um, and with those, we would hope that as parents that you are able to give your children at least some of those things to be able to come to a child care center with so that they can have a healthy day. Exactly. The most important thing about having at least, uh, let's say, four of those five groups, again, just trying to, to be helpful to your situation there, is that normally uh, we, as humans overall, we need specific amounts of each nutrient. So when we talk about, for example, uh, dairy, here in Canada, again, sorry, I'm from Brazil, the nutrition situation there work a little different than here, but uh, dairy usually is compound of protein. So if you have protein from dairy and, for example, protein from meat, then you're good to go. You're tackling that uh, nutrient factor. If you want to get some whole wheat uh, stuff, chances are you're going to be tackling carbs. If you get veggies, fruits, that's when you're tackling all the vitamins and minerals. So having a dish, a snack that has at least, uh, let's, let's try to be a little more flexible here, three out of four or three out of five, depending how you see those nutrients, it's, it's a great start. All right. And now, my question here, Sam, as a follow-up to that, why do children need to have those groups of foods in their diet? What they're doing to, to their good being? It's good, for their, it's good for their development. It's good for their physical development. It's good for their brains. And it just overall makes them a little bit more healthier. And when children eat, they are a little bit more easier to guide um, and teach because then they're not worried about being hungry. They're not focused on you know, other things. They are being able to play with their friends. They're able to sit with us and learn. So it is important that children get the right food in their body in order to there you go. And funny thing, and again, that's me with my knowledge and understanding how foods and the food groups, they actually work inside. 
If you eat a lot of carbs, they're basically going to be giving you energy, right? But if you eat some good levels of fats, fats are going to make you feel a little uh, satiated. It's going to keep you, you know, like full, let's put it that way. And finally, if you eat enough protein, then you're going to be filled and you're not going to be hungry for quite some time. So having this mixture of carbs, fats, and protein, and then of course, if you can add greens, etc., will allow you to have a, a better life, right? Because if you only have carbs as diets, and again, if you cannot afford any other diet, by all means, you know, <laughs> when you don't have anything, whatever you have is something. But uh, if you only eat carbs, then of course, you're going to be feeling hungry faster because your body burns carbs super fast. And the same goes for children. Then you need to snack more often. Of course, you're going to be going into that delicious kind of snack that we all know that sometimes can be high calorie, right? So having that balance allows children and of course, adults for that matter to keep in a, having a good relationship with food, right? So now, Sam, when it comes to an example, if you're going to tell parents like, oh yeah, no, if you're ever going to bring your children here to next gen, this is the type, an example of meal that we would expect uh, in terms of uh, nutrition rich. So within a day, something I'd like to see for breakfast and for children is um, fruits or anything that would be oat, like oat related as well. So oatmeal, cereals, things like that. Um, they can come in dry or wet. So. Um, if your child is more inclined to just snack on Cheerios, that totally counts for me. And then for lunches, um, I would like something that's a little bit more filling. So what most parents end up doing is using the dinner that they had from the night before or preparing something for their child. Now, um, it would be nice to have some protein in that, but I've seen children where they just really like macaroni and cheese. And if that is their go-to meal and that is something you know that they'll eat, that is something I'll support here because at the end of the day, I want your child to be full. I want them to be able to do the things that we are able to provide for them when they have a good meal inside of them. And then in the afternoon for a snack, it can be vegetables or fruit or even anything left over from their lunch they did eat. So. Super simple. And again, uh, we get it. Oh my god, organics, grass feed, beef. All those fancy things, uh, do they have health benefits? Uh, I, I could spend hours telling you why yes and why no, right? And why sometimes it doesn't even matter. It does, it's not worth it to pay double, triple the price for something that is slightly better than your average you know, product that you can buy out there. So the important part here, just so your child and you can have a healthy relationship with food and you guys can, of course, eat when needed, is just so you, as Sam mentioned, just make sure that you're giving the nutrition uh, groups, protein, carbs, fat, uh, and vitamins and minerals, right? In nice doses. So uh, the Canada guide for a uh, food guide brings the idea of, and I might be wrong on that, but two portions of uh, leaves, greens, one portion of grains or whole wheat, and one portion of uh, preferably lean protein. And I'll leave the link for the food guide uh, in the video description so you guys can double check and prove me wrong if needed, right? Because I want to give you guys right information. Now, important part about nutrition here, Sam, children can be picky eaters, yes. right? So let's say that a parent out there is experiencing that classic situation where a child only wants to eat mac and cheese or chicken fingers. What would be a good uh, technique that parents could use to at least diversify the child's uh, diet? Um, I mean, that one's a hard one, so it always depends on how your child will react anyway. But for the most part, what I've always been told um, is that your child will eat when they are hungry. So they will phase in and out of wanting certain foods. So it could be macaroni and cheese, chicken fingers, french fries, pizza, um, popcorn. <laughs> um, those things happen where children get a very good liking for what they want to eat. Now, for the most part, it is okay for them to eat those foods and it is okay to eat them in a little bit of an abundance, but having choices is a very important thing. Um, my daughter did not want to try kiwi, um, which was funny to me because kiwi is delicious, but I ended up telling her that it was a green strawberry and that was the thing that made her try it and now she really, really likes kiwi. So as a parent and as a caregiver, you have to be slightly inventive on how you're going to get your child to change their taste buds to like a little bit more stuff. 
Um, but for the most part, really what you have to keep in mind is even if your child is a big eater or a small eater, like where they and like they eat snacks a little bit more often than big meals, um, they will eat when they are hungry. And that is all you can do is just let them play, let them move, let them have their daily routine, and when they are hungry, they will stop what they are doing and they will end up eating. Yeah. My mom used to actually, in Brazil, we do a lot of beans, right? And uh, she used to actually uh, cook the beans with some uh, veggies like carrots mm -hmm. and you know, like uh, green beans and etc. And yeah, that's how I actually, when I learn older, that it's like, okay, so then it's okay to eat that weird orange stuff, right? Uh, as we mentioned in our developmental uh, milestones video, it's 100% okay to give your children a little bit of a push when it comes to you should eat a B or C that is better for you, healthier for you. Right? Uh, without that nudge, without that little pressure, there might be no evolution. Right? There no be, there might no not be any betterment of your child's uh, taste. So just caving for your child's needs, not the best strategy. And again, you don't need to push in an aggressive way like you eat it or no toys, right? You can be inventive, as Sam said. You can introduce things uh, in, in a fun way for children. Uh, I've seen a lot of pancakes that are decorated with blueberries, raspberries, and they just make a funny face with fruit and children love it. Right. Smoothies are also an excellent option because in that you can add many things that your child may not be perfectly aware of. So you can have a lot of fruits and things in there where they are aware, so strawberry, banana, but then you can also add kale or add a carrot or add those things where the nutrition is there, but the taste is not. <laughs> yeah. As one of my uh, favorite TikTokers says, uh, eat what you want, add what you need. And again, if your children want pancakes, make a pancake, but again, make a face, a smiley face out of fruit, add what you need, right? And, and that's the idea. It's being inventive, being nice, and still ensuring that you're doing the best for your children, understanding, of course, your uh, financial situation, your time management situation, because if you start stressing out too much about the perfect meal, the perfect uh, groups of foods in one specific thing, and buying organic and grass-fed instead just of your regular thing, you might start developing food anxiety and that's something that we don't want. We already have enough stresses in our daily life to be stressed out by food that, in my opinion, should be something pleasurable, something nice that you eat and you enjoy, right? Uh, and I know that many of you out there, and please leave in the comments if you disagree and why, and if need to be, I will definitely bring you uh, some articles to show more information. But uh, there's a lot of a bad rap in terms of canned food and frozen food that tend to be uh, a cheaper variation and easier even to prepare than your fresh uh, counterpart of it. But again, if time's at the essence and if you need to add more veggies, more greens, more fiber into your diet, into your child's diet, uh, you can absolutely go for the frozen uh, variety and the canned variety. They are not unhealthier. As a matter of fact, when you look at the nutritional profile, they are very similar. And when we talk about very similar, we're talking about like micrograms of nutrient in terms of uh, difference. So again, I'll be happy to share some articles if any of you are interested. But regardless, I will be leaving the Canadian Food Guide link in the com in the description of the video in case you want to check out and understand a little bit of what you can do for your better health as well as your child your children better health i think that sums up huh i think so yep all right folks there we go information for you we hope that this video was useful and again stay tuned for more videos we're here to try and help you to raise your child with more support than everything else and all the bad stuff that you might hear from other social media, from that weird friend that always gets a little too pushy in what you should be doing or not with your children, all right? So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.